Hey guys, Joshua Peterson here at Peterson Electric. This video is going to be about a Siemens um, charger pack for an evil car. And uh, the video is March uh, 18, 2019. I'm going to go to starting here next year. I'm actually going tomorrow to start my revision of my new code in the 2020 cycle of the ADC. Interesting to see where they actually have um, some changes. This is going to be about um, why it's not so simple to just get an evil car installed sometimes. Um, it is interesting that a lot of the car salesmen will say it needs a 30 amp dryer plug, but then the wire rating on the instructions is 50 amp to 60 amp rated. Um, and there are different parts of the code that are important. I'll do a second video about code on this. Um, hopefully you can find that, but I don't wanna make the videos too long. Uh, but this one's gonna be really quick. Um, we got here, and this was installed already a, uh, up since last September. So um, any of you electrical guys that are watching me here in Loveland, Colorado, um, it, you'll probably know that this is your job, so if you watch me. But uh, this is a pretty big criticism I have towards your, uh, your apprentice who's doing the wiring because the customer found out it was an apprentice and uh, the master journeyman was a master, wasn't here watching him and also did not make him correct these things. And I will show you in the second video about a lot of 10, about 10 things I found that were major concerns to me that I would not touch this job until this was completed. Uh, so first of all, the first mistake I saw was they used a rigid GRC nipple here to just sub panel. And there was no bushing on this side, therefore cutting into the wires. Then they used a bond bushing on the other side, but you don't need a bond bushing. Yes, if it has an eccentric, concentric knockout, you should use that, but that's only in the situation of feeders on the line side of a main disconnect. Okay, or you can bond bushing it too if you want just to have extra protection. I went ahead and sealed these up because look how much wire was naturally going in there and they were trying to cram all this in so I couldn't get the cover on. So there's two violations. The third violation I saw um, was the fact that when they were entering the wire, they had white wire used on all of these ungrounded conductors. That's the third violation. It says in Article 200 that you're not allowed to do that. It also talks about this in 312 that you're not allowed to have any sharp bushings without some kind of bushing. Not just for the purposes in 300 that if you have a number four and larger, but also if there's abrasions on the conduit. The other thing that I saw as a mistake um, is he had all of these feeders coming in here as reds, including these going up to the hot tub. I'm the one that taped all of this black and white. Uh, the code talks about in chapter 100 that you have to have identification of at least three stripes. Well, I do a solid. But sometimes you get a, you can't see what gauge of wire it is then, but honestly, most of us understand six versus four gauge if we've been in this trade. That's the fourth violation. The fifth violation is that he had these pulled in here without a tandem with a black and a red. The sixth violation is they didn't have any listing of once they moved all the wires where those breakers go, so I have yet to do that. And the seventh violation they had was they didn't have a Myers hub up here. I do think it's good to put a little bit of silicone around the top of these because I don't trust these three quarter fittings. Okay, I did seal this one pretty well. Just want to make sure it's not gonna leak. Uh, now, when it came into that, the eighth violation was the mini straps. And I'll show you in the code too that you have that quarter inch gap when you're in a wet location for raceways. If you look up in the back of the book in the 2017, it actually talks about raceways and drainage. So that's the eighth violation. The ninth violation was the fact that they didn't have their fittings completely tight. And there's probably actually more. So then they fed the hot tub this way. The tenth violation is they don't have a slip sleeve. And that's in Article 300.5 that you should slip and sleeve that PVC. The eleventh violation is the depth. 300.5 also talks about a 240 volt rated piece of pipe. Schedule 40 has to be 18 inches deep. This is six and a half. Again, another slip sleeve on this side is not in there. So as the ground expands, it's gonna rip out. And then the 12th violation is they didn't seal up this hole. Any atmospheric pressure or temperature change between either even a hot tub in a house or any temperature coming in does not help the hot tub stay completely sealed without cold air coming in and changing that thermostat besides rodents mice and bugs getting in there 
So any which way, there's 12 violations that I told them when I came out here and I took pictures. He was at work, so I kind of drew on the picture and circled things on my phone and sent it to him. So I just want you to keep in mind that it's not always so simple to come out there and just pop in a quick thing to do this. Now, some of you electricians out there who watch me, some of you guys think I flex too much. You know, flex is okay to use if it's not as What do you put the tractor back there? I think some of you guys get a little too extreme on stuff. So I went ahead and showed you. This is a pretty sweet piece of conduit I bent, and I'm proud of myself after 22 years. This is a back-to-back -back 90 with an offset four inches deep, and I still found a way to strap it. The one thing that's interesting about this, guys, if you dads do it yourself, buddies for beer, or electrical engineers who think that you're going to be able to tackle this yourself, keep in mind they do a one-inch knockout. Siemens, if you're watching this, I wish you guys would change this. Most of us know as electricians that you're going to have a three-quarter conduit, especially three wires and not a, a, a neutral in there. I could still get four number six in there with only two degree bends and two back-to-back thirties. -back so this is truly only 180 degree bends and then 230s to 60. It's only 240 degrees. We're allowed up to 360 in the bend to push the wire. I still could have got a number six in there. I did use a number six for green. You don't have to do that on that kind of service for Article 251.22, but I went ahead and did it anyways because I had it on me and it doesn't hurt to have it larger. We do not need to have the plastic bushings with the number six. Okay, sometimes you can put it on there if you need to. But keep in mind, um, the other thing is that when you're charging this Siemens box, this is actually allowed to be outside. They actually changed it so when it hooks in, the water will rain come down. It is sealed all the way around for the inside versus the out. Once you take this cover off, there are five harnesses you have to gently take apart to take off and pull this cover off so you can wire. But you did have to use a one inch rigid nipple with a bushing because of the corrupt the coarseness of it and you had to have a one inch uh, rigid coupling to a reduced fitting of a three quarter to one inch then to get your connector in there and then I stubbed it and then put a rain tight seal and bent it. So he wanted outside because of the that his garage cannot fit it. This is his workout area and it's heated. So we put it outside. It challenged me because over the phone I was like, oh no, I can't stick that outside. But sure enough, he was right on the instructions. It's designed to be outside. So Siemens has changed it. And even the Tesla box is rated for outside from what I've seen so far. So um, I don't really suggest electronics outside. I truly think everything stays warmer uh, inside. And once it's warmer, it's just gonna last longer. Anything outside in the elements is hard on it. At least the sun doesn't beat on it all day long on the south side in Colorado. It would beat on it just a little bit on the east side considering the other houses next to it. So again, guys, here's hopefully a good um, recommendation for you to look at all this before you decide to go out and buy this. Um, he did ask me, can I fit a uh, electric car charger on my service? Yes, you can. Keep in mind to charge it on off time. So if the hot tub's being used, it's not being used at the same time. Your hot tub does not truly draw 50 amps. It's going to be drawn a little bit less. Uh, this is, Tesla is interesting. That's wired um, just like a Sundance hot tub with no neutral um, or the Siemens box, excuse me. But he did use this for the Model 1 car. Uh, a lot of Model 3s guys are going out and getting Siemens or the juice box or they're just going to get the Tesla capsule. I do like the capsule for the reason that you can adjust your amperage of how much you want to use. I get a little nervous from some of you engineers who have taken tweak that and I only have a six gauge wire and the next thing you know, you didn't upsize the breaker nor the wire size or they upsize the breaker and then they leave the smaller wire and get both sides adjusted to 80 amps. That is not allowed. You need to be putting in a number four copper wire. And then you call me and say, hey, can't we just slip that in? No, you're not gonna easily get in some number fours and a three quarter. You usually have to have a one inch EMT conduit or a flex. All right, guys, thanks for joining us. Hopefully it'll help you out.